Okay, can we hear Hi there, folks. Welcome to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil. If you're just joining us on the live feed, welcome to HarleyCon 2020. I hope you guys are all excited for all the events that are going to be taking place tonight. Please go now to HarleyCon uh, at the Facebook page spelled H-A-R-L-E-Con. 2020. And right now we've got live events going on. If you're watching us right now on the StreamYard Facebook, uh, Facebook, page, Facebook, page, Facebook page there, we've got a special guest today. I'm very excited that we brought her on here. But first, let me introduce herself. Hello there, guys. I hope you're well. My name is Velila Shabalala. And um, you'll probably most know me, most of you will know me as Rosita in The Next Doctor. That was the Christmas special um, in 2008. And I'm really, really happy to be joining you here on, with um, The Legend of the Travelling TARDIS. So, hello. My name is Christian Basil. Years ago, I had an idea. I got myself a TARDIS. Took it to new places, met a lot of new people, took some great pictures, and talked Doctor Who. From Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With web show, this is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Join me on my latest adventures and become part of the legend. Oh, I thought that stream ended. <laughs> it took a while for the video to go out on over there. Hi there, folks. Again, welcome. My name is Christian Basil. We've got an exciting episode of The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS for you. And just in case, just a reminder, after this show, if you're watching it live, go to Harley Quinn, Harley Con 2020, and her Facebook page. Check it out. We've got a lot of stuff going on over there. That page, a lot of talented people coming up, including Josh Bauer, The Kitchen Killers, Hanging With Web Show, our uh, producers, you name it, they're going to be out there today if you're watching this on the live feed and on the YouTube channel. But also, we want to thank our friends at Geek Insider, geekinsider.com, who are providing the live feed for you. Without them and Meredith and the incredible team at Geek Insider, we could not be doing this live stream without, without them. But first, I wanted to introduce you to the lovely lady who introduced herself just <laughs> earlier, who's part of the Harley con 2020 and i'm going to get it wrong i've tried it at least 300 <laughs> times i'm going to do it i'm going to do it again and probably somewhere along the way do it again do it again and somewhere along the way i'm probably going to curse somebody out in two different languages by total accident <laughs> valile shabalala Yay! Yay. 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 Wow. Oh, shut up, you all. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried so hard. Speaking off of naming people, let me go ahead and get to our panelists right away there. To my lovely left is the lovely Melanie Dean. Pieces of Melanie. And you you've already done something at HarleyCon, is that correct? Or you're yes. going to be doing something. Gotcha. Oh, Tell course. us. What, um, yeah. At HarleyCon today, I did the. I was able to go on to the artist panel. We were moderating. Mm -hmm. That was Josh Bauer's uh, panel. Uh, yeah. Artists on there. Later on today, um, we're going to be doing the Using Illusion in Writing panel. That'll be at four o'clock. And we're also going to be doing a panel, which I believe Nisha can tell tell a little bit more about it. And I'll mm -hmm. let her say that. So yeah, that's that's we're we're doing panels like left and right. This is fun. So I know. So please check us out as soon as this episode's done. Go over to that Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Speaking of people who are going to be participating look at that eerie the eerie man himself oh, mark yeah. muncie how are you doing there mark what Hi, are you gang. going to be doing doing well, doing well yeah uh later today i'm on a panel uh talking about books because i've written a few and have published a few, and, and <laughs> just, a few. Got, just a few just a few got on bestseller list a couple times you know nobody really cared uh but uh, you know my question everybody's always asking, <laughs> no ego that attack like, well, it means i made a a little bit of money, but not a lot. But uh, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I'll be. Uh, I have a panel at seven o'clock with a couple other authors. We'll be talking about publishing. 
Gotcha. Speaking of books, we have the lovely Mackenzie Floor at the Right of Wands. How are you doing, Mackenzie? You're 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 yeah. are you doing you're just doing the panel today here with Val and the gang, right? Actually, I got thrown onto another one with Nisha later on. Yeah. Yay. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm actually surprised that I didn't get invited to one of the author panels, but it's probably because nobody knew I was going to be on this, so they didn't know didn't invite me, you know. <laughs> For those of you who are watching or on the other panels, Mackenzie's available and so will I be after all of this. I, I'm sure there will be alcoholic beverages after this show right there. Speaking of Nisha Mulchin and her panel, well, there you go. There's Nisha Mulchin. <laughs> Nisha, what are you going to be doing with Mackenzie? How did you do that? So we're actually launching a new series that's part of something that Mackenzie, you didn't get thrown in, Mackenzie. That's Mackenzie. We put a big like, asterisk. Like, you know, but like, hey, I want you to be on this panel. Like, I, I consider it last minute, you know, thrown in, you know. <laughs> so we <laughs> have a night owl because usually somebody tells me at midnight or one o'clock or two in the morning, they'll be like, hey, will you do this at 8 a.m.? Sure. We are doing something called How How Fandom Has Um Made Me a Better Me. It's a series uh about looking at all of the the the, the diverse nature of fandom from architecture to medicine to the traditional pop culture fandom, Doctor Who is, and how it has affected our um, our psyche how it's influenced us positively, how it's changed us, and how it helps to guide us to become a better who we are on a regular ongoing basis. Because um, you guys know I do science research so on this, so basically that's what it is. And we have a fantastic panel. I'm so happy Melanie's gonna be there so she could chime in too. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, Lalile Shabalala. I'm done. Okay, I done the name. That's it. I'm done here. No more. So goodbye. From here out, you're oh, no, that's good there. And, for folks, and folks, if you just don't remember what Val did, I'm gonna Val. It's okay, right? Yes. <laughs> We're gonna that's go. Right now. Yeah, you've got to check out what she did. She was in the next Doctor as Rosita, <laughs> and I've got to confess, probably one of my uh, what I'd consider one of the missed opportunities of Doctor Who, where she was playing yeah. uh, Rosita to Jackson Lake's Doctor, if we can call yeah. him that there. But I was just like, oh my goodness, she is just wild and spunky and just, uh, she's everything I wanted in a companion. And they lost her. They just left her with Jackson Lake. Oh, we just dipped her on earth right there. That's what we're done. Right there. How, you do, how you doing there, Val? How's it going there? Oh, I'm really well, thank you. Really, really well. It's so nice to be here. So thank you for having me. I would, no, we are we are totally excited. We had a panel this morning. A little bit of a technical problem, but we were just enjoying ourselves there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No worries. No worries. No worries. We're here now. We're here now. We're here together. We can see each other. And folks who are listening to us, thank you for joining us. Either if you're listening to us on iHeartRadio, on Podbean, on Radio.com, CBS style, uh, Spreaker. Also, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, the NSC Live, or definitely from our producers' friends at Krypton Radio, KryptonRadio.com. A 24-hour service of nothing but geek out music. <laughs> and our podcast uh, is... Uh, is on there as well. Also, our friends over at the Hanging With Web Show, our producers can't do the show without them completely. And we just joined a website and we hope the best for her. It is the mother of gratitude herself, Jen. Uh, Jen Hall, who runs the Gratitude Radio Network.com. It's one of our, it's, I wouldn't say our new home, it's kind of our extended family home. So you can check us out there. Val, how are you doing? And for those who may not be familiar with your work, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Okay. So, um, yeah, um, as I said before, um, most of you will know me as Visita in The Next Doctor um, several years back, a couple of years back, um, which is absolutely amazing. But um, yeah, it's such a, such a wonderful opportunity. And even just seeing the pictures now that you just put up. Yeah. It was, um, it's almost like, was, was that me? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's been a little while since I've seen the pictures, actually. And it's just... Yeah, I can't, it's, it's really difficult to put into words how grateful I am to be part of this this whole family. And I remember when I first got the part of um, Rosita, someone said, oh, you've got a part in Doctor Who, you've got a family for life now. And I didn't know what they meant yeah. until now. I really I am I'm understanding that massively now because it's 12 years on. Mm -hmm. 
and I still get to do wonderful things like this. I just thought I'll do my episode and, you know, don't forget about me, and, you know, that would be it kind of thing. And, and it's not at all. Um, I still get to do things like this. I still get letters and, and whatever. And it's just, it's really humbling and it really means a lot to me. And it's just something I've wanted to do ever since I was little. Um, and as I was saying to you before, Christian, I don't come from a showbiz background. It's, you know, I don't have like a director, mum, producer, father and stuff. I come from a typical African family. So what that means is if you try and say to your parents, I want to be an actress, they will tell you to get a proper job. Go on. Get that. Well, just a little bit of history. Your your yeah. dad, your, your family's from Zimbabwe. Your dad was a mechanic, so he had a proper job. He had yeah, a proper yeah, job. I, 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 I don't know why I'm constantly reminded of this when I hear about the kids and stuff. I don't remember if you remember that Monty Python skit where the son wants to become a coal miner and the dad is working in theater <laughs> and he's telling his son, you can't become a coal miner, you'll be stinky. You can't do that. And it, the roles are reversed. So the dad from theater and goes, you need to be in, oh, you need to be in theater. It's just, and I, I keep saying that when I ever hear somebody said, no, uh, dad, mom, I want to be in, I want to be in theater. I told my parents the same thing. They go, yeah, well, uh, make sure computers are your backup. <laughs> just in case that, that, that theater doesn't work there. So your parents are from Zimbabwe. When did they move to London? They moved from London, yeah. right? So they moved to London back in 1974. And it wasn't uh -huh. Zimbabwe then. It was still Rhodesia. It didn't become Zimbabwe until yeah. 1980. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and my parents, they're amazing. You know, they it's always a fear of the unknown. So when I did first say I wanted to be an actress, obviously, Dad, no, I, I didn't know what an agent was, a theatre school. It, literally, it was just completely new. But as the years have gone on and I did get into it, they're nothing but supportive. Um, it's, yeah, and it's, it's wonderful. I owe them so much because, you know, back then in Rhodesia at the time, Zimbabwe now, um, it was very difficult. There was still a lot of, you know, uh, racial segregation and right. people not being treated very well. But they came here and they made such an amazing life for myself and my siblings. So, yeah, I owe it all to them, to be honest. Just out of curiosity, because my parents, my mother mm -hmm. is from Cavite City in the Philippines. My dad is from Maryland. Mm -hmm. Don't ask how they got together. <laughs> <laughs> and they both ended up in Florida. How? Why did your parents pick London of all the places they would want to move out to to uh, for you for you to have a life yeah, as well? Good question actually. Um, so there's more opportunity here. It definitely wasn't the weather. <laughs> 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 I say that about Florida too, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I for the weather. actually wanted to, um, cause yeah, that's it. We actually had some family that came over beforehand. So oh. they, they kind of followed So And you know, that obviously they had people there to support them and get them started. And so mm -hmm. it's an easy option. I mean, they did want to travel around a bit, but that didn't happen. <laughs> Just no, got stuck no. in London. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Well, I we have some chats over here. Let me get, grab the chats in just a few seconds. So we want to say hello to Garrett Palmacher of the Hanging with Web Show. Those those people are wonderful. They produce this mm -hmm. show. We can't again. We can't do this show without them there. Let me go ahead and bring in uh, live chats. If anybody wants to chat with Val herself, there Rosita from the <laughs> Next Doctor, and I, I tell I got to tell you you. We'll talk about it in the show later. <laughs> um, we're joined by Afrid Pennyworth. I'm loving these events going on. Check out HarleyCon 2020 in the vendor room. Yeah, that's right. They do have a vendor um, room. So if you want to help the people who are sponsoring uh, HarleyCon, definitely go out and check the vendor room out as well. Great artwork, including my work. Oh, that's why. <laughs> no self-plug there, Terry. Oh, Terry, I actually beat you oh, to the feet. Okay. Um, Terry uh, MacGyver says, I'm still a little preoccupied with a few things there. So there. Oh, Alfred okay. says hi to Mark. And poor Chris, uh, Carl Witzman, <laughs> poor Christian cannot just pronounce names. All right, Carl. <laughs> Carl Wattsman, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> today. If you want to join into the live chat, please go ahead and do so. You just do it from the Facebook page or the YouTube channel. But before we continue, we're going to take a hard break. When we return and pay those bills, we're going to continue with the Legend of the Traveling Tardis with the lovely... I promise you, when I get back, we'll get the name. I promise you. <laughs> Go to commercial break. Break.
Bateman. What's the Bateman? A novel set in Florida, written by Florida author D.L. Havlin. Suspense, mystery, and murder. Evidence is in the bait. The Bateman is available at local bookstores and online. Hi, I'm Claudia Christian with some exciting updates in the Sinclair Method world. Um, first of all, we launched our new coaching page. It's yoursinclairmethod.com. So you can go there and book a session with one of our fabulous coaches. You can also reach that page by visiting c3foundation.org. It's at the top of the landing page of the website. The second piece of news is Journeys is out. Woohoo! This book has been a long time in the making and it is available um, in Amazon, Barnes and Noble, your local bookstore, and there's a limited amount of signed copies at c3foundation.org. So get your copy of Journeys now and visit the coaching page for some wonderful support. If you're on the Sinclair Method, you can book a session with a variety of different coaches. Take care and be well. Jackie Sonnenberg's My Soul to Keep is a ghost story rooted in the realities of actual cults. When 13-year-old Sky Monroe arrives at her new boarding school, all she can think about is death and connecting with the afterlife. Soon, she discovers her school's spirituality group, the Guardians of Light, and they have a secret. They can speak with the dead, and the organization is a cult. But this isn't Sky's only problem. The campus house where Sky resides is haunted, and even the ghosts have an agenda. They intend on getting the souls they want. Filled with mystery and intrigue plucked straight from the headlines, author Jackie Sonnenberg's research and attention to detail give this ghost story an even more eerie atmosphere. Find My Soul to Keep on Amazon.com today. Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish. Santa, if there's one thing I want for Christmas more than anything, it's someone to spend Christmas with. Someone who really wants me to be there. Head to the mountains of East Tennessee with romance author Jenna Hart for a Christmas writer's workshop. Since her mother passed after a long illness, Jenna has had one wish. She doesn't want to spend Christmas alone. Meeting Niccolo Maldini, cover model and actor, could make more than Jenna's Christmas wish come true. Unless Ember, Niccolo's ex-girlfriend, does something crazy to stop them from being together. It's a mountain Christmas romance you won't want to miss in Deborah Parmley's Jenna's Christmas Wish. Now on Amazon.com. And we're back with the legend, the traveling TARDIS, with our special guest, the Lele Shabalala. Yay. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that picture up there because I think it's the most awesome picture I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> it's very, very, oh, I just remember so that. Why is like, it oh, I like it. That was amazing how they did that, actually, because that was, um, obviously, I had to run towards the, which was, they said, the, the Thames. But it wasn't, yeah. it was so clever. They had this, um, how can I explain it? It's like a really huge tray, like a, a metal tray with water in it and um, and glass, like uh, yeah. a little bit, little mirrors to give that reflection. It was right. so cool. I wasn't near a river at all. I was nowhere near a river. <laughs> we're not supposed to tell people that. You <laughs> we were in the Thames. <laughs> It's been filmed now. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been te it's been over fourteen years. Yeah, let's go on there. Yeah. Like, you know what? You know what? You you said earlier, which, which disappointed me. Not in a bad way, but it's just like nobody remembers Rosita. And they said every Christmas, I remember Rosita every single Aww. Christmas. If that's not if the if the BBC or the BBC America does not play the next Doctor, there's something wrong with the BBC. <laughs> I'm BBC thinking big America. finish. I'm thinking Big Finish needs yes, some next. No, oh, my oh my god! Yeah. We should talk to Nick. 
get that yeah. going. Uh, I I don't yeah, want to spoil too. anything, but that might happen later. But speaking of happening later, first of all, <laughs> you've seen our sponsors, folks. You've seen the numbers of people that have been watching our videos who subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channel, advertise with us. We support our sponsors and vice versa. We take care of them. Email sage at the hangingwithshow.com or myself. We'll give you special rates, special accommodations for whatever you need. We can do things a la carte. We have special packages, mm -hmm. but the traveling tart is now excessively wow we're 36 000 people subscribed on the facebook page sure you got a lot of people <laughs> so definitely want to join us and especially if you want to join us at the youtube channel go to youtube uh user garrett pometer um or you can just type in hww's media and join us on our youtube channel and not only see us here at the legend of the traveling tardis you can see a lot of content at us uh, uh, saturday morning cartoons the kitchen killers uh the hanging with web show jay bauer art all those guys uh, and you forget the the hulu you know, you know what, Melly? I forget the Hulu and the and the uh, and the Netflix. I'm literally watching our channel for the most part, and I don't even have to watch the TV shows anymore. Well, I think you need to cancel some subscriptions and start saving some money. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is all free. <laughs> this is all free. There. Um, we're just going to jump into the chats a little bit down there. Um, no, Carl's back. And Carl Watson, <laughs> I'm not get his name wrong. I like the attitude that you showed through Rosita. Oh, yeah. Cute I, and I, I got to admit that uh, th th that's what got me. You really owned that character. Oh, thank you. If so it was, much. You it. made the three. It was like a little. I want to say three way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <but it> was, <laughs> The three, the three of you. Yeah, the three of you worked so well together, and you oh. really bounced off not only. God, I, I want to say Jackson Lake, but who's the guy that plays Jackson Lake now? Forgive me, the governor. I, I know his characters, but I don't know his name. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Da, more, yes, him and uh, David Tennant. So when you got to finally work with those two, how how did it how did it work out with those? Two it was there? just ridiculous. I think <laughs> that very first, um, as I was saying before, when we spoke briefly before, Christian, um, my very mm -hmm. first day was the first scene when they first, you know came into contact the doctor and Jackson Lake right. um, and all chasing the cyber shade around and I think I did spend the first five minutes standing between them ready to do the scene just literally going <laughs> 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 oh, it was literally I was just literally pinching my I was like this is ridiculous how is this happening like David Tennant, that was enough. And then right. it went, and David Bob was like, what? what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it's mental. Even just when that, that you were showing the pictures before, I just look at them, I'm like, did I do that? This, it's mental. It's mm -hmm. so mental. I would have been happy to have, I don't know, sat in the background of a scene in Doctor right. Who or that episode, especially, you know, the, um, the the Christmas special. But to play that, it was. I just had so much fun. And yeah, and um. Was it, it was a lot of fun, and obviously my agent called me up and said they need they need a gobby black girl from for me. To okay. <laughs> so yeah, I could do that. But as soon as I um opened that script, um I was just like I've I've got to get this. I just loved I loved playing that 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 character, and yeah, and it did and it did work very well as um a three way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't encourage now. this. <laughs> right. no, 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 now I'm just one skyline chili, so it's all good. Oh, stop. Yeah, don't encourage him. No. <laughs> all right, I'm throwing you all off. <laughs> all right. It's going to be me and Val. That's it. We're going to I got to ask about Misfits, though. That was what I was what... <laughs> Anyway, back to the chats. Anyway, back to the chats. Alfred was kind enough to put into the group chats uh, the link to, I believe this is the link going to uh, Harley Con, the vendor's room, to help support out all the teammates over and over there. And this gentleman over here, Matthew Rose. Hi. Hi, Val. Hi, Lily. Oh, thank you. It was so frustrating. First, you couldn't see me, and then me, oh, I don't know. It was just a bit of a palaver, really. No, no, no. We just pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. If something goes wrong in anything there. that I do, no. always wrong or always forward. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm bringing in Matthew Rose just a little bit on this because I want to tell you something. You and I have something in common. It has something to do with Matthew, 
I will explain it later. And it has something to do with Doctor Who. <gasps> Oh. Yeah, so we're going to make the announcement because Matthew was kind enough to tell me uh, at the last minute that this is going through and this is happening. And you and I are now both into this there. Speaking of which, uh, I want to go back a little bit there. Your parents bring you over to London. When did the acting bug finally hit? When did that come up? Why didn't you become a computer girl? Why didn't you get a real job? Why didn't you get a real job there? I couldn't even get my Zoom chat to work before. <laughs> 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 but um, I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always been there. It always has been there, and um. I was just always in school shows and stuff. And when I was yeah. like a nipper, really tiny, I'm like four or five years old. Um, I think when I was about six, seven, I, um, you know what it's like if, if when you, you look up to someone. I remember when I first started watching Rippy Goldberg's films oh. and she's like, oh, She's like my biggest inspiration ever. She can just do everything. And I remember thinking, finally, there's someone that I'm seeing on um or in a film or on screen that looks a bit like me she's like dark skin and got these crazy expressions and it really meant a lot to me watching her work growing up and i love the way she can go from comedy to drama just like that she's amazing so um but coming like i said coming from a, a family that's not showbiz i had no idea how to even get into it so years went by and i just carried on just just doing plays and stuff at school the usual right. um and then when I was 13, we, we went to Zimbabwe for holidays, which was amazing. But you know, it's like when you go on holiday and you start thinking about um, stuff that you want to do and go back home, you, you get into that mindset. And I just remember talking to my auntie and saying, I really, really want to do this. When she said, if you still feel that way when you come back, let me know. And I did. Luckily, her best friend um, was an actress as well. So they helped me. They got me into Sylvia and Theatre School. So I started going to um, Theatre School every Saturday. So <laughs> it backfired with my parents because they thought, oh, you let her get it out of her system. She'll get bored of it within a year. Nah. <laughs> it got a whole lot worse. <laughs> and I wanted to do it more. So, um, yeah, cut a long story short, I carried on going for, for four years. Um, started doing some auditions, just like small corporate things. And then this audition for this like really big um, children's CBBC program came up. And my agent at the time managed to get me an audition, which was amazing because I hardly had any credits to my name. I don't know. He was amazing anyway. Um, he he got me the audition and he said, which sounds really cool. He said, you're probably not going to get this because you're up against girls that have been doing this for years, but it's a good experience. And I was like, cool. And I ended up getting it, which is amazing. So, like, a yeah, main part. Um, and that was for four years. It's a, it's a massive um, CBBC, show, CBBC show called Kaching, mm -hmm. And uh, I still get it now. Like, 18 years later, people coming up to me and go, Kaching. That was kind of, like, the thing that you used to do. And from then on, um, I was going to go to drama school at the time, and I wasn't sure whether to go for the job or go to drama school. Obviously, my agent getting his commission told me to get the, go straight in. But to be honest, it was the best thing for me. People got different paths into it, but it was the best thing for me because I just literally threw myself in at the deep end, and it opened lots of doors for me. For me, from from that point, and it just carried on from there. So, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you right now, when they say that you're part of the family, not only is this a family that you come running to, it's a family reunion you love going back to over and over yes. and over again. Because once you're in it, and I, th I think everybody agrees with me, whoever does something in it, even Jeremy Raddick, who we had on the show, he was in oh. the TV movie for like three minutes. <laughs> I mean, being a part of it. Yeah, you were, you were talking about, you know, you, you and I would go back. You know, if we were ever, you and I were ever asked to do Doctor Who, I said, I'll put a mask on. I don't care what I'm doing. Walking around. I will be the rock exactly. in the background. You and Jeremy said the same thing. What's you that? Go to conventions. You can go, go to all the Doctor Who conventions. Yeah. Honest to God. And then you'll oh, find out exactly how many thousands of people recognize you, touch you've touched them, love the episode, and we'll throw some money towards you to have their photo. My <laughs> eye. <laughs> That would be the business side of me. Just right. turn it on. <laughs> well, I agree. I agree. <laughs> you, would be, you would be fantastic in the convention yeah. world. Yeah. Um, have you done a convention yet? Has anyone? I did a convention in LA. Oh, gosh, I feel awful. Hopefully, at some point, I'll, I will say the name of the, the company. 
Um, I did a convention in LA, 2014. Uh-huh. Uh, Gallifrey oh. One, maybe? Yes. Gallifrey One? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was the one. Yeah, the big one, yeah. 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 It was. Because that's a Doctor Who convention. It's the pr it's like the big premiere convention. The premiere, yeah. yeah. People say Gallifrey One. It's Gallifrey One. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. But um, I, I love doing them. And I remember when I first did a convention, um, as you guys would know, you have the table, you have your photos, and, and um, you've got someone to sit next to you just in case, you know, um, people get a bit too familiar or whatever. You just give them a little tap under the table, carry on talking to them, and then they get moved on. Because sometimes um, I was told that sometimes they can talk a bit too much. They have to try and move them on. It's the other way around with me. I don't shut up. Because <laughs> 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 I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. Especially yeah. before I said I'll probably just do my episode and then just kind of, you know, fade away again. But it's no, I love it. I no, love you're 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 in for life. The, the, yeah. honor, the, the there is no yeah. fading away. You 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 might go you might go, but you're gonna come back. And every Christmas, like I said, you're 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 part of my TV watching. Yeah. Oh. There. If I don't have the next doctor and Rosita out there jumping around, t telling off David, <laughs> both Davids. I, I, it's not good. It's, um, Matthew Rose says, I, I agree. I think this is what you mentioned this part. Yeah. Being champion champion oh. for the, uh, for Val to be in Big Finish, please bring her on in as a new role or back as Rosita. Oh, I, I would yeah. even say this, and this is, in, I think Jackson Lake and Rosita need a series of their own. Yeah. What happened right. after that? And that would how be amazing. I'd I love to know if team them up with the Paternosters, team them up with some others that are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. God, that would be yeah. Totally. I'd love to write one of the episodes. I've been talking with somebody from right. that is part of the Torchwood Big Finish team, and they've been talking to me about writing. So I'd love to write something. I'm doing a screenplay now, so I, I, I got the idea. I know how to do it. <laughs> oh. That would be amazing. <laughs> Don't say Rick Briggs, can we send you this video for crying out loud? <laughs> You're getting a lot of love in the chat right now. I yeah, you been. are there. Oh, there. Um, we really are. <laughs> we have Letitia Jones. She says, yeah. Jack Glass is one of my favorite movies. Oh, and, uh, yes. You no, know, I saw I saw that comment, but you, what's just funny is if you really think about it, um, Jonathan Price kind of is doctorish because he's the mysterious yeah. guy that's doing the spy work. And uh, Whoopi Goldberg is playing a character who's kind of like the, I wouldn't say the straight woman, but is yeah. like keeping things real, yeah, keeping yeah. in reality. And I do see a lot of Rosita popping out of that. <laughs> so I, I guess the influence worked out there. Um, yeah. Alfred Pennyworth just reminded us to say the Hanging With Web show, our friends who run the show, uh, for produce us are going to be performing at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Carl Woodsman said, I'd love to be the third Cyberman from the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that was, um, yeah. Derek Jacoby, I think, said what to be a grain of sand in Doctor Who. Right. And, was, you know, and then he got his wish. <laughs> you know, and that was that was it. Can um, I tell you a funny story actually about the yes. Cyberman? You know, go episode. go for it. Yes. Go. Oh, I shouldn't laugh actually. You're gonna think I'm really horrible. But no. can you remember <laughs> no. I don't know. Why? I'm out of the story. <laughs> um can you remember that scene where they had all the children? Um, Miss Hartigan had all the children working, um, um, work working for her, like as like slaves. Yeah. And, yes, yes. Them and there was these um, the doors to the sluice. That's it. And they opened up, and these two Cybermen came out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these little kids all um, lined up to go in, and the scene was for them to come out of the the Cybermen to burst out of the the, the doors, and the children had to march in. But um, <laughs> they forgot to warn the children because they were doing just a um, uh, what do you call it before you actually record the scene? Um, they were just um testing the cameras and the positions and whatnot. Okay. And they didn't warn these children, so these two massive Cybermen just went, <laughs> came out <laughs> the tiniest kid at the front. <laughs> 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 Imagine that there were about three foot these little kids. <laughs> and, uh, and how much? Did, how much did the BBC spend for therapy on that little <laughs> video? <laughs> wow! Poor kids. I the funny side at the end. It's fine, but oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm just sitting there screaming. At least I mean. 
They were probably yes. trying to be as professional as possible and staying on their mark, but. Yes. <laughs> okay, kids, lights, camera. <laughs> this is the part where you die. <laughs> Oh, dear. Okay, more of our... I was coughing. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna we're we're on a hard break. <laughs> when we return, more of <laughs> more of our psychological therapy with Val. That was awesome. We're gonna. <laughs> I had to traumatize the kid. Please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and continue part of the legend. We're going to a break. Experience Samara's adventure as she imagines the people around her change into friendly cartoon animals right before her eyes. Journey with her in this poetic tale, My Cartoon Imagination at School. Alien invaders enslave Earth. Unleashing hunters into the ruined wastes. One young survivor struggles to elude their monsters clinging to hope. When he's stolen off the planet by a sarcastic Starship AI, they, they pit their, their uneasy, uneasy alliance, alliance against, against a treacherous, treacherous galaxy. galaxy. Explore a whole new verse of barbarism and betrayal. Wonder and adventure. In the Scion series. By Michael J. Allen. Beginning with book one, Scion Conquered Earth. Available in print, ebook, and audio on Amazon.com. Now on Amazon.com, I coin from author Jeremy Mosby. It's an alternate reality, and the leader of the planet I coin is none other than Benjamin Franklin. When corrupt officials threaten not only I coin, but the Earth as well, an unlikely chosen one, Jeremy, must face dark foes to save the Earth and I coin alike. Author Jeremy Mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe. Get I coin on Amazon.com today. Best selling and award winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason, is back with a brand new book The Pink Canary. A book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's gonna kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. And welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. We're giving psychological therapy to children all <laughs> over the universe oh, and beyond there. Yeah. I'm Christian Basil. Welcome back. I have the lovely director, Melanie Dean, Mark Muncy from Erie, Florida, Nisha Mulchin from Diversely Geek, uh, Kenzie Floor, The Right of Wands, <laughs> and the Lele Shabala. <laughs> Lovely. She's we were back. saying before how um my my name goes to a lot of songs. Basically anything with la la la. What's the one you did before, Christian? Oh God, no! I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 la. Am I the side? I I should be I should be punished. I love it. my favorite one. Is yeah. um what's that Tony Christie song? Amarillo. Do you know, is this the way to Amarillo? You can go shabba la 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 la. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 that oh, was part of great. every favorite Saint Eagle song that you've ever heard there. Speaking of which, Val sent me this picture, I just, I, and I love it. This is you and oh, David. Oh, oh, my God. That is just adorable. Such a good night. That was now, David's birthday party that we had. Oh, really? Now, for yeah. those of you listening to it, uh, listening to it, I know you can't see the picture, but David is giving a big hug. He's in a nice suit, too, by the way, I and giving it. a big, warm, embracing hug to Val oh. there, and they're just smiling. I love you got it. an incredible smile, too. You also got oh. an incredible face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Can I, sorry, you can tell me to shut up if you want to. No, no, we're not. <laughs> Don't shut up. But um, ever since I was little, my mum always used to say to me, stop putting that face. And I'd be like, what face? Like that. And it's only when I first <laughs> saw it. <laughs> I'm like, Bloody hell. I didn't realize I expressed my faces. So in my head, if I'm confused and I'll say to my mum, what face? That's kind of what I thought I was doing. And really, it's like, what face? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> well, the great thing was that even though you're here, you're a companion, so you're 
background. Mm -hmm. um, you're because you were just so expressive on <laughs> even like the back. You just you. <laughs> Your, your expression spoke volumes right. and they weren't just and the thing I, I loved about the Rosita character that just really kind of grabbed was like this is what a companion should be it should yeah, be so uh, yes. yeah. our, Are you our react, the audience yes. reaction okay. you really no, have to, to, anybody. to Mark saying the audience reaction <laughs> and that you were keeping Jackson Lake to task at what you were keeping the doctor to task <laughs> Wait, what? But you had that that you that the character knew who she was, and that you really, really just jumped into that that skin and just uh -oh. expressive, and we could see that in the background, everything. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. That honestly means, means a lot. Well, it was, and it was a couple oh, years cool. later. I'm watching uh, the Misfits, and you came on, and I didn't. I was like, I know this person from somewhere. <laughs> I, I know this actress, yeah. and, then, and then you did it. Impression on that, and I was like, "It's Rosita! Oh my god!" Very well done. Me like, well "What's wrong done. with you?" <laughs> 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 Thank you. Well, you well spotted. I did it last long on that show. It was um, a re reoccurring theme um, of the probation workers getting killed. And I've got the record for being the most um, shortest lived probation worker. Oh, I get killed great. very quickly by a zombie cheerle cheerleader, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> Not that they went out that way. So that was awesome. But no, I, I loved it. I was like, oh my God, it's Rosita. I'm so happy. <laughs> Let's go back to our chats a little bit there, Carl uh, Watsman, Witsman, whatever I want to call him. Uh, Rosita was the star of that episode. Yeah, that's true. That that, that doesn't even need to be said because she took on one and a half doctor. <laughs> to be honest there. Uh, Leticia continues. She says, trust me when I say that you are a Whoopi Goldberg for many dark skin girls all over the world who love sci-fi. Yes. Thank you, Leticia. I'm, ho I'm hoping to see. I, I, I think one day you're just going to be because you've done so much work, I'm gonna, you're going to be the what I've called the Hugh Laurie effect. Everybody, you're going to have this huge <laughs> resume. You're going to find the pinnacle role that finally encapsulates the best of Val, and then everybody's going to say, "Who is she?" And you go like, um, "We knew about her. Before. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been, <laughs> Rosita? No, really." <laughs> Leticia, who who you're reading, is going to be on our panel at um five thirty this evening. Oh, cool. She's actually a oh, really yeah. strong. She's a diversity expert. Oh. <laughs> and theater educator, so she's a fantastic person. Oh, I'm so happy she's on here. So. <laughs> what well, time is that my time then? Because I'm five hours ahead of you guys. Are you're right? five o'clock. That'll be ten thirty. Hey, you are a thousand percent welcome to jump on that panel because it's really yeah, cool. we would love for you to come. It's really, oh, really cool. yeah. It's a very open expression panel, which Mackenzie can tell you and Melanie. It's just about expressing who you are and you know and mm. and why something means that much to you in life and has mm. changed you. You just told us the story. You said that something you knew passionately that mm -hmm. was for you and indelible to you. So, yeah. I, just my question because I'm gonna jump in real quick. Was it difficult in the timeline? Because you're talking about the 80s, 90s? Um, um, no, uh, actually, when I started working, my first professional job, to 2002 is when I first started okay. working professionally. Yeah. So How the was it for you to assim um, you know, assimilate, <laughs> sorry, um, or, or to really be, you know, um, how is it still to be able to be taken seriously for a role? Like Rosita, I mean, you're you're exemplary in that role so much so that 15 years later we can still see you with our eyes closed oh. in that role that's how much of an impression you left thank you so much People thank you well. so has it been difficult for you or you know how just as um, an actress in general or? yeah yeah it is difficult and i'll be really honest it's been um <clears throat> it's very very up and down and um, one thing that um, a lot of people don't see is the, everyone always sees the finished product. They don't see um, what goes on between that. You know, they'll see me on Misfits, they'll see me on Call the Midwife and Doctor Who and think I'm just doing that all the time and I'm not. It's very, yeah, <laughs> it's very, very up and down. So I did um, the children's series for four years. So I had that, um, so I kind of had that safety for four years. 
And then it's only when that series ended that I really started to um, appreciate how difficult the industry is. And it is so up and down and up and down. And just at that point where you're like, I don't want to do this ever again. I hate this. And then you get a job. You're like, I love it so much. (laughs) 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 I I think it's just like any job that you apply for. Just uh, if it's acting or not, it's just like, I hate doing it. I hate going to that. You want me? Yes. (laughs) I'm happy. It's it's crazy. And there has been times where I'll go for something. And for my own sanity, you know, when you don't get a part, you don't get a phone call back. Um, You only get the phone call if you've got the job. Um, So for my own sanity, I've always had a rule um, of giving giving it a week. And if I haven't heard anything in a week, without being negative, just, you know, um, I most probably haven't got that part. And there has been times where, um, you know, I'll go for something, not hear anything, and I'll be like, I didn't want it anyway didn't want it as crap and then I get a phone call a week later oh, they all want to see you oh fantastic you oh, great <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a funny world it's um and it is difficult but um and it is up and down but at the same time do you know what I'm gonna look at that positively and just be that person to to say I, I've got a you know a normal job in between um the acting and they're amazing I work with kids um and they're so good when I need to go off and do auditions and whatnot. And even though it is hard, I'm actually quite grateful for the struggle because when I get the work, I really appreciate it. I work really hard. And I'm actually really proud of the fact that I've come from a background that's not, you know, daddy was a director and mummy was a producer and gave me the part. And blah. Yeah. I've worked my butt off to achieve what I have. And everything that is on my CV whether it's that like one line or a massive role like Visita, I got that by myself. And mm-hmm. I got that through hard work, not bitching, yeah. backstabbing. I've never slept with a director. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I, you're, I, I, you're, you're in a minority in Hollywood, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Quite I'm possible. Happy. And then also, I'm kind of glad that I've been kind of forced to, to do other jobs. You know, I've mm-hmm. been a cleaner, I've been a bartender, I've been a waitress, I've been... And it, do you know what? It's it's just life experience, and it and it's helped me. So yeah, I hope that answers the the question. And, uh, <laughs> that was perfect. I and it's got to be <laughs> much harder because we we've, we've interviewed a lot of doctors, celebrities in this new COVID world to find a job because right now it's very limited. And yeah. Nick Briggs, yes, get this girl on a big finish. <laughs> <laughs> Get all of us in the big finish. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get Val in big finish. Get Val. I, I, I did never. Back to the chats anyway. We're going to offer Pennyworth that comes back and says, well, that story was a mic drop. Great way to come back and take a break there. That was about the children that we've just ruined. Uh, Kusiru Kalor. Oh, my goodness. That's a beautiful name. I bet none of those kids would be interested in cybernetics or, on the contrary, extremely interested. I'll say that yeah. would actually draw me to it. That <laughs> They're all in the cabins now. In the woods. Little cabin in the woods. Ooh, if you was, exactly. They're, they they don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> They want nothing to do with anything there. Matthew Rose always kept talking about a reunion set with David T. Yeah, he Morrison. does. He does. I just, yeah, you two, Nick, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to give it the Pastor Nodder gang, if you're going to give it to Jago and Lightfoot, why not these two? They really do. Oh, they really do they need to. Because not only that, you do have the voice to do a dynamic role. And you, I could just close my eyes and listen to the yeah. next doctor and I could hear you really just taking yeah. it out, the out there. Absolutely. So if, 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 if given a chance, would you redo, would you come back as Rosita or would you want to come back as somebody else if you were asked to come back? Oh, that's a hard one. Hmm. <sighs> nah, I'd, I'd want to come back as Rosita. She's part of me now and that's yeah. what I would, um, I'd want to do. It'd be quite interesting, seeing as it's sci-fi, to come back as Rosita, but maybe there was an episode where, for whatever reason, her um her her, her character changes. You know, there, there could be something um where you could explore where she's got a, a different character or she might be overtaken by something. That'd be fun. But if I choose that one, would be very good. yeah, that'd be you know, um something like that'd be really, really cool. But um if I had to choose one, it would always be Rosita. 
Rosita, sorry. Rosita. <laughs> <laughs> I, already gave you an idea. I already gave you a story idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Mackenzie, we're on it. <laughs> I got a Chris story. Why not? I got a Rosita story. <laughs> 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 story. <laughs> well, apparently Mackenzie's going to write your big finish uh, story now. <laughs> I think we're just doing the uh, the audition right now. <laughs> <laughs> get the, get the pitch ready. Get the elevator pitch ready. Oh, man. Just, just go, oh, I did want to play Rosita again. He wants me back? Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. oh uh, damn! <laughs> we've got a hard break when we continue with the legend of the traveling tartars we're going to be wrapping up our uh and uh our, our interview with val the lovely val rosita from uh, the next doctor plus uh we i'm going to make an announcement that both val and i are in relating to doctor you know about it. you should know about it and Matthew Rose is the connection. I, and I will show you to you. When we return, please continue to stay logged on, tuned in, and become part of the legend. You have more options than ever before when choosing a film, a television, or internet series, a book to curl up with, or even a radio show or podcast. Get to know the people who are creating for you. The Hangin' With Web Show, hosted by award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pometry, is the Internet's fastest-growing web talk show series. The Hangin' With Web Show features professional, yet casual, in-depth interviews with creative arts and entertainment pros. Meet the people behind a digital revolution in creating more quality content than ever before in the history of media. Find the Hanging With Web Show on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, or simply go to www.hangingwithshow.com. That's www.h-a-n-g-i-n-with-show.com. This is the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Also, catch us on the HWWS Web TV YouTube channel. Subscribe today and become part of the legend. And welcome back, folks, to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Here is our Traveling Tardis picture of the day in honor of HarleyCon 2020. This is the lovely Amelia Poole, HarleyCon herself, as Catwoman. And there's the Traveling Tardis itself. I basically walked up to Amelia and said, um, do what you want to do with it. And she put that pose on, and that just made me melt. So, again, if you're joining us here on the live feed, don't forget to join us at HarleyCon 2020 on the Facebook page. Uh, go over there and subscribe. Check out all the wonderful content that's going to be going on to midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time. And welcome back, everyone. Here's Melanie. Here's Mark. Here's Mackenzie. Here's Nisha. Here is Valile. 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 I thought we start overthinking it. Yeah. Start overthinking you just say it. You got it, man. <laughs> And Val, there it is right there. Melanie's holding it because I cannot go and get it because we're still kind of stuck. We're in where quarantine. We're, at. we're yeah. in Florida. So there's <laughs> the traveling to artist, our the traveling artist itself there. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. So we, uh, we wrap up everything out there. Um, Matthew Rose, come back. Tom Backett. <laughs> Tom Baker is Victorian <laughs> one. Rosita would be fun. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Just here. Oh, yeah. The fourth doctor in Rosita. Holy cow, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Rosita and anybody, I think. I don't think there's <laughs> oh, yeah, I got you there. And Amazing. for those uh, for those interested, I was one of the creators of She is the Doctor. The, she is the Doctor's uh, presence in troubling times. <laughs> like this needed to do something, created two audios stirring stirring mm -hmm. Wink Taylor and Wendy Abrams. Wendy Abrams, not only you gotta hear her voice, 13th yes. Doctor, and yeah. Sophie Aldred, too. Yeah. And Wink oh, yeah. Taylor, can do all 12 doctors, which is amazing. 
single-handedly have a conversation out there. Uh, Val was in the the last one with, uh, as was Angela Staines from Star Wars. I was from Star Wars, currently working on the final two adventures. What are we talking about there, Val? We're talking about this. You and I are both in a Doctor Who fanfic called Times Landing. Uh <laughs> Of course. Well, well, I I guess I, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have a couple lines in Times Landing, and so does uh, Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Burress there. And yeah. here's the cast list. And I, for the life of me, I can't say your name. I can't say my name as the character. And if I want to take a <laughs> shot, right now, that is my character, Mizab Lorkna. And I actually had to say that. Ms. Stop looks. Take a look at that. Yeah, That's my you name. On purpose, weren't you? Telling Christian, here, try saying this that has no vowels. <laughs> Is the name backwards? Am I looking in a mirror? When did you write that? Did you look in a dictionary and say, you know what would be cool if I took these two words and reversed them? And make it like Christian could never say words ever again. I think he knows. I think he knows, Matthew. I'm, I'm on yeah. to you right now. <laughs> so I I'm excited that Val and I are now on a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> I can on this one there, yes. So, uh, so uh, Matthew got you into this uh, this special project. Uh, how, how did it? How did he get to you? And what did you feel about doing an audio fanfic of uh, Doctor Who? Oh, it's just yeah, it was great fun, Matthew. Um, is wonderful. He's become a very good friend of mine. We first became acquainted um, through his. Um, company Starbuck in management and he basically gets me conventions and stuff but we've become really good friends it's very dear to me and um yeah he asked me to do it and um I've, I've already done one for him actually this is the second one that I've done and uh, it's great fun I love doing all days you can just sit sit there in your pajamas do it <laughs> actually at my friend's party last night and um one of the um clips that I sent to Matthew wasn't clear or something I'm not sure um and it was actually quite nice just to just to nip off. Sorry, girls, in a second. And I went in the room and started doing a couple of lines. And one of them came in like, what, what are you doing? Because I was doing this really weird voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> but it's great fun. I'd love to do, I'd actually love to do more audio. Um, and it yeah. seems it's, there's a lot more. Um, I love the way people are becoming even more creative with, with, with audios, and there's more work now. Be um, that's the kind of silver lining with this whole COVID thing, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 it would, yeah. great stuff. So, and we're, um, doing, yeah. we're doing stuff like this. I mean, we, a lot of our mm -hmm. folks who are not it's able to keep those ears it. open. Hmm. What's that? I was telling Mackenzie, keep those ears open. <laughs> she's her friend because I'm doing a screenplay. I'm writing the pilot. Something right <laughs> I do audio. I have I have audio books that I I have. Actually, Chris Walker Thompson did my audios. We probably did the last one with Matthew because I know he was part of that project. He, he yeah. Doctor. Oh, awesome, awesome! I love it. It's so oh. much fun. Well, sadly, sadly, Val, we've come to the end of the show. Absolutely, was that an hour? I know, yeah. I guess, but, uh, we're, if you want, you can stay for the after party. I'll explain that as soon as we end the recording there. But I got one thing to say. You're going to get a good kick out of it. Um, after I did my verbal, my 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 recording, uh, Matt comes back to me and goes, "Can you scream?" <laughs> <laughs> And I wrote back, will you buy me dinner first? <laughs> I, I won't explain any more than that. I won't give it away. But I, 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 uh, I wrote on my Facebook page, I said, I just did an audio play, and apparently I'm a screamer. <laughs> so, Val, before we go, uh, do you have any upcoming projects or things you want to let people know what's going to be happening just in the last few minutes we got? I don't actually have anything com coming up at the moment. Um but obviously this is this is a great um you know platform where if um the next thing comes along i will let you guys know definitely oh, but um, that's everything that i love about the doctor who fans they're always um asking it's not like they just watch doctor who and that's it they continue to watch everything else that you do after this you know <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Matthew just wrote, yes, you and now Bonnie Langford, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. Uh, <laughs> folks, thank you so much for joining us. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, the HWS Media. Make sure you hit the subscription and the notification bell. Otherwise, you're not going to get all this great content free. Free content, no, no, three ninety nine, no other plus things or anything like that. You get the free mm. content. I want to thank you, Val, for coming and joining us. I want to thank Melanie, wow. Mark, Nisha, and Mackenzie. Val, any last words in this for before we go? Just I love you guys, honestly. Oh. I thank you so much for having me. And honestly, the whole Doctor Who family, I can't tell you how much you support me. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'll I'll do it. it. I've, I've never been able to. People, I know people do that. I do this. Doing the heart <laughs> thing. Right? I look like Batman. <laughs> My life. <laughs> yeah, but um, such big love. I'm literally just feel so so uplifted, oh, and it's a difficult time as well. Sorry. No, do you have a social media people that you oh, want people to follow? Oh yeah, people follow people. you. Twitter, yeah, I'm online. Fan. Um, Velile underscore T, so that's my first name, underscore T. You'll find me there. Okay. We'll, we'll make sure we put the links to everything. And when this comes out in audio form, we'll make sure those links show up as well as there. Folks, thank you for joining us. If you want to join us at the after party, we'll be here for the next half hour. Thank you again. Have a Bye. great day. Please stay safe, stay strong, mm. and always become part of the legend. And that ends the audio recording. That was so absolutely brilliant. That's so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. Very <laughs> much. So, Thank so you. I'll just let you know that this is still recording, but the, the audio That's portion right. is over. So, yeah, if anybody streaming. wants to jump in any last minute or if anything I'll be right back. that we, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing that's lovely about all this, this, this yeah. virtual world. You can't do that in your life, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot of times I want to. <laughs> where, where I work, we have the we have the Zoom meetings, and I go to Zoom, and it's just like, yeah. Remember when you had to be the kid that tell the teacher, "I gotta go to the bathroom." I gotta go. Now today, you just go click, bye. <laughs> Nobody even notices that you're not even in the room anymore. And just like, what did I miss? What did I miss there? Yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. Um, Melanie has had enough of it. <laughs> Come on, anytime, uh, anytime, be happy to. Okay, well, yeah. Right. We'll talk about well when we get closer to um, Val. If if we did this, if we talk about the, the mm. would you mind coming back on here? What's that? If we talk, if you yeah, we talk about times landing. If we do a group little thingy. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. I, I don't know what we talk about it anyway. It's going to be posting out yeah. there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but Val. We we I, I can't say enough of it. I don't think I express it on the show. My God, I meant this was a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. She was a missed opportunity, and uh, I, I meant uh, th that's one of the things I just hold against. Moff is just that there's so many characters, there's so many plots that he just oh, yeah. kind of like, well, and it's it's not a to say it was bad or anything. I just like I think Big Finish kind of picks up the pieces every now and then. I'm hoping mm -hmm. that Jackson they will fix this problem. They will fix this problem. <laughs> it's it's a matter of time. <laughs> I have complete confidence they will fix it. <laughs> it took 20 years for Jago and Lightfoot. We can wait a few more. I, I know. Yeah. How long was Jago and Lightfoot before it finally showed? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was 79 to what, almost 2005? So, yeah, it was a while. Yeah. <laughs> So actually, we're putting. Um, we've done this before with other folks. We're actually putting Nick Briggs into the hot seat in the next coming weeks, and he, he came out with his own audio called "The Human uh, Frontier." I'll try yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll join you with that Amazing. because yeah, I just got to remember who was it now that I was talking to from the tour tour team. They're like, they were like, "Well, give us pictures, give us pictures." I couldn't think of anything. I only had was Doctor Who stuff in my head. I'm like, that's not going to work. It's not torture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and if that person may be listening right now, I still don't have any ideas, but I have still, I have plenty of ideas for Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> Change the Doctor for Jack. You're good. So that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard 
wired when you got my brain is right now all wired with right a want. So it's it's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's very wired with that because I'm I have a publisher who they hired me to do the bin, they call the binge watcher guide to Doctor Who. So I go through all the doctors, yeah. and so I will be going through Rosita in, in its own special book. I can't wait to get to that part of there. <laughs> In fact, I'd love to interview you for that book because that's one of the things I do with each book is I interview people who are connected with the show. And I'd love to include you in that. <laughs> oh, it, absolutely. I'd love to do that. That sounds awesome. Such a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my publisher's mad at me right now because they're waiting for my second half of the, the, the 13th Doctor book. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm kind of like writing a screenplay right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm busy. And then when they said 13, the 13th season was delayed, I'm like, well, maybe they'll forgive me now because it's been delayed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work, though, from, you know, writing several different, uh, you know, more than one, at least, anyway? Do you, do you find it difficult or do you kind of have a plan as to when you're going to do a bit of that one, a bit of this one? It's a little bit difficult because I'm a planter, which means in, in the terms of writing, there's those who have outliner, there's the outliner, and then there's those who write by the seat of their pants. And I do both. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I have like uh, with the screenplay, I had to learn about all the five acts and how to structure it. Yeah. And, and and to be honest, before I started writing the screenplay, I was one of those people like, well, I'm not going to change anything from the book unless it actually makes sense. Well, so far, mm. everything I've written so far has not actually been in the book or has been in the book, but it's been altered so it fits the screen better. So it's all new material. Yeah. So go figure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to answer the original question, it, it can, because my brain is one of those that goes, I, I literally, like my brain is like flapping hands constantly. Yeah. Constantly, which is why I'm up usually till three or four because I can't get my brain to shut up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. And then we talk then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's something that she usually does that. Or I, I got a dear friend, Wendy, who is a big Matt Smith fan. She, she'll she be like, she'll post her Maddie sp stuff on, and I'll be talking to her, and she'll, she'll be go, she'll be, go to bed, pond. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, it's very much that, you know, writing is basically that whole, you know, it's, I'm going to get five hours of writing done, which means you're doing three hours of prep. Yeah. And then maybe get an hour of writing, and then you got an hour to freaking get it out of your head. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And my head. problem is I haven't been able to do that because I'm I'm doing this structure with a coach. I got a, a screenplay oh. writer who is a who's an award winning because I wanted to get into it and do it proper the first way because I'm, mm. I'm a, a perfectionist. I will admit that. <laughs> so I wanted I wanted to be able to do it proper the first time and not have to go back and redo everything. And yeah. um, it, it, it's. At the same time, I have a producer that is in Hollywood and it's working on multiple projects. And so he brought me on as the web designer and the graphic designer and the video designer. So I'm doing all of those at the same time through all this COVID stuff. He's like, well, you know, I will, I'll get back. I'll be on your team for the screenplay. And then got some other people on there. It was quite funny because I'm right in the main character for Matt Smith and none of them on my team had any idea who he was. Nobody knew it. And then they saw a picture like, oh, we, 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 yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so I was like, I was it's just so funny. Like, I'm like, oh, why me? <laughs> oh, and that's man. another thing that I don't know, Mark, if you ever had to write characters in, in different accents, where oh, yeah. like me, since I've been writing right ones all yeah. the characters are British, I have picked up so much slang and oh, yeah. I didn't put it in my normal speech. And people were like, huh? Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. I'm like, I do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're working on Erie Appalachia now. So it's all the Appalachian and, you know, back hills stuff. And yeah. I, you grew up in West Virginia, oh, and it took me years to get rid oh. of all that. And now I, every once in a while, it'll slip back into conversation. I'll be, "How y'all doing?" And I'm like, "No." no. <laughs> no. The, the book I'm writing, the fantasy series that I that I'm writing now, I'm like, mm. I don't know, I'm about thirty percent through. Um, everyone has different accents in it too, so I'm like, I think I put myself in a real big pickle because I put everybody <laughs> in different lands and stuff. They're all extremely culturally diverse though i'm telling you and yeah my character, that's important yeah is like 
was very unexpected. But like, I know what you're saying about with the writing, you, you have so many ideas and you sit down and you're like, yeah, yeah that only this much gets at you. <laughs> so you're like, okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, because it's usually I'm like I was supposed to be done with Act Three, and I just finished Act One last night. I know what I'm doing to get into Act Two, and I was like writing, and then get an email from my producer. Yeah, we need conversation tonight. We need to do this. We have blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so that's usually what happens. I'll get an email and be like, we need to do this ASAP. I'm like, okay, so I put my project aside so that I can put him first, since he's the one who's paying me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is hard, and and the right ones has done very, very, very well, and but it still has a long way to go because this is only this. I just finished the second book a couple months ago, and it, I've still got another four books yet to write in that series. And now I'm writing the screenplay because it's just this is the time to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, told, I, t I think I told you, Mark, I said, Mark, I'm waiting for your book, uh, Erie, Florida, Christmas and Bithlow. Not that they're paranormal. They're just really scary places. <laughs> 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 I'm, if they, if they, I'm sure there's something paranormal, but that's not what's scary about those two places. <laughs> yeah, I write enough about Key West and I don't even have to write the paranormal stuff half the time. I, exactly. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I, um, Chrissy and I went to Key West one time, um, Actually, it was it was the vacation that I proposed to her. She, we went to Key West, and we went on a haunted tour, which yeah. was really cool. The thing was, is that they brought us when they finished everything. They brought us into downtown Key West, and there was only like ten of us, and the other seven like scurried. The other seven or eight like scurried, hmm. and you are literally in the heart of Key West in dark. It goes with, down at night. Yeah. It, it's it was like sitting there and it was like you're walking watching people i doubt they were mean or quite but they just didn't look right no. so yeah. we ran into the store and I'm like <laughs> called a taxi and said i don't care how much i'm paying for this just get me back to her <laughs> <laughs> and it just like it was just i love key west in the daytime this is flourishing beautiful oh, yeah. scenic wonderful historical and at nighttime it is like oh it's hey, satan incarnated they're the, they're the only city to secede from America for a day uh, and then declare war on America and then immediately surrender knowing that they couldn't win and demand $8 million in federal aid. It was that was that the uh, was that the Civil War? Was that the no, no, this is called the Conquer Republic. It was much I was greater. Say it's the Conquer Republic. Yeah, oh, they greater. still drive around in their golf carts and throw stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, they to... drove around in golf carts and threw French bread at uh, Cuban yep. bread at people. So that was their yes. that was their. Well, it's this is happening because if it's really good Cuban bread, I'll get it. I'll go down there. <laughs> that was all fun. And then years later, the yeah. Navy decided to do this where they treated Key West as a foreign power and they were going to go there and negotiate with them. And they didn't tell Key West they were doing this, but they found out. So they refired up the Conquer Republic and got their Navy, which was a bunch of fireboats. And they started yeah. firing at them with the water hoses and demanding their surrender. And the Navy actually surrendered to them this time. <laughs> they didn't want, they didn't want an international incident. <laughs> Whoa. Florida man, Florida man, Florida man is what? <laughs> it's Key West. <laughs> Valley is available for all voice work parties and cosplaying. Oh. Wait a minute, is he yeah. pimping you out? What is it? <laughs> wow, there we go. <laughs> Are you? Is he your agent too? Yeah, so um, I have okay. my um, theatrical agent, but then uh, Matthew does all the Doctor Who stuff, oh, and he's okay, brilliant. Cool. He's absolutely oh. brilliant. So I'm very lucky to have him. Awesome. <laughs> I was like, as somebody I need to know, I network with so many people. He's not on my. I don't know him, but he knows Chris, so I need to. I yeah. need to get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, hey, she did That's a trailer great. for me for <laughs> the Beach Watcher series. <laughs> I know people in that. <laughs> Poor Nick, yep. I, I met him by giving him a business card that went in his pocket and probably stayed in his pocket. He probably never looked at it again. <laughs> 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 That's actually how they got US one. Wet, how US how they afforded to get you a Kyo, uh, They were using it as like um, they were blocking the after the Cuban boat lift. They were you know it kind of went one way where everybody was for it, 
And then yeah. everybody realized Castro was sending all the people out of the mental hospitals and the prisons and all that. It wasn't sending just family members like people thought. So it, the you know political side flipped the other way. Everybody's like, shut it down, shut it down. So they put roadblocks up at the end of US-1 and Key West <laughs> was like, you know, that was killing Key West because that's how they get their traffic. I mean, that's why they're dying now because, you know, they're having trouble getting people to come down. Uh, well, that's, that's really interesting because it's like, well, uh, using the coronavirus chronicles, using that is people think it's eerie, but like with Rita Wands, my main character, he's technically a doctor in the medieval times, but he's dealing with literally something that's very similar to COVID-19. So it's like, I'm looking at a lot of this, I've been doing research and looking at the similarities and there's just the, the illness, the, the symptoms, the way government ran, the way that people saw yeah. it, all like repeating itself. I'm like, well, this is strange. Well, so a literary yeah. agent said to me, goes, Mackenzie, you need to make this a screenplay because people need to look at the main character who's Mirta. He goes, you need to, they need to look at Mirta and hold on to him as the way of getting through all this. I'm like, wow, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> wow. So, even the fairies are running to Key West because yeah. I don't think you put that many people on boat because that's usually well, the two ways yep. to get to Key West. It's the ferry mm -hmm. from Fort Myers and yep. then, or Naples. And then taking taking the bridge. Yeah, and yeah, mile drive. So, Mark, let me get this straight. For a long time. No Mark, way let me get go. let me get this straight. If I want to fill in the potholes outside the yard on Curry Ford Road, I just have to declare war on Orlando. Yes. Just come out with with an Elmer Fudd <laughs> cannon to Walt Disney World. Stand outside. <laughs> Mickey's going to get it unless I get those potholes filled. <laughs> Eight, billion and I'll get it done. Eight billion. That's what you got to ask for. So. Eight billion. I, I, I got a 20. Maybe you know what my currency is. Well, that's is. what they'll do. They'll give you the 8 billion, but only like $20,000 of it will go to fill your fill your stuff. The rest that's, of it will go everywhere else but there. That's, that's, <laughs> yes. that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you really enjoy all this information you just yeah, exactly. oh, <laughs> <laughs> TMI, 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 I don't even live there, TMI. <laughs> I'm <laughs> safe here. Yeah. No, potholes everywhere. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love how Christian and I stayed quiet when Valele said uh, you know that she hadn't slept with a producer to get a job. Christian and I were both like, well, we can't say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we're being like, transparent here, Mark. Oh my yeah. God. Sorry. <laughs> I was young. I needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you are the producer, though. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That works. There. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get that much money. So. <laughs> all, I, all I can think about that is I have this, this story that people have been begging me to write. This act, it is a true story. And my character, my main character, actually had to sleep with a producer in order to keep her job. Then ended up losing her job anyway, you know. So yeah. it's because of something totally not related to the producer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't. I won't say what gig it was, but it rhymes with uh, Schmooper Boy. But you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm hoping that that part, that that type of you know abuse is starting is like like going you know going away. I would hope so. Okay. It's in the it's in the forefront. I'm hoping. I mean, uh, what do we know? Because we're not part of that part of the world. But oh, I hope so. That needs mm. to go. <laughs> talent people need to do talent. People need to just be, you know fairly yeah. and get their fair shots and stuff. So. I'm mm -hmm. saying this, Mackenzie, because like you know, you have a character in the upcoming book that like. Shut up, Garrett. <laughs> 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 I can't hear you very well. You just say you have a job for me. See, look at there. This bridge slipped in right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a job for Valile because we're in our book, the book that we're working on. Yeah. Ready to go to script. You know, here we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a time. You know that. Oh my God, Garrett's going crazy. Do you see what he's? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
So, uh, Derek, can I get a show so I don't have to see it either? Yeah. So, so, Val, what was your impression when you came on the show? Was this anything yeah. that you were trying? This is even more fun than I thought. Oh, it's just going to be another interview. They're going to ask me questions about my career. And then it went into sleeping with producers and giving kids trauma oh, from yeah. Cybermen. Boom. Out the door. Oh, God. My God. Yeah. We're not that kind of radio show. Oh, <laughs> Never well, right now. I mean, you talk about sleep with your producer, buddy. I mean, you know. <laughs> James Goss wrote it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Writing. Have you right on, right on, right there? Oh, what's that? That's what it is. Uh, yeah. He, uh, I'm well, just Matt, waiting for Rosita this, this is, and this, Jago. There yeah, you go. This, yeah, is a, this is a dream. Rosita uh, and Jago would be a hell of a yeah. combo. Say, um, well, I, I can say it anyway because it was an idea. When she said about doing something different, I'm like, well, why don't we toss Rosita into the alternate world that right now is so big and big finish right now? So oh you yeah! Alternate yeah. What is the alternate Rosita doing? Yeah. Yeah. Ever came up with uh, Mark like Five doing. different worlds that they've been born in in the Rose time travel thing, where she's trying to find the Doctor, okay. and and each time she's found okay. her family, and each time they're different. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm like throwing it into the alternate, throwing Rosita into the alternate, maybe. Multiple versions of Rosita, and one of those yeah. is this one that Matthew Rose is suggesting there. <laughs> yeah, you must her up with uh, Mark Gaddis's uh, evil master. Uh, yes. okay. yeah. 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 interesting if that happens. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll send Nick yeah. Briggs an invite right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're pitching him now. Yeah. I'll send them this episode <laughs> that we, we have a pitch for you. Yeah, there we go. There we it's go. a pitch. And we'd like you to do all the work. Do it, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just the age, age, uh, what, what, wait, 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 <laughs> we e we either got you some really cool promotion and we're getting you into the door, or we've got the door slammed on you. One thing or another. <laughs> I don't know where they are. One of so oh. sorry in advance if we got the latter part of this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What what time is our after dark show? Is that eight p.m. tonight? Huh? No, what we're doing an after dark show. Doing a five o'clock one. No, hanging with is doing a five o'clock, but we have an adult panel, I'm right? Come on, that's, that's, that's Josh. Oh, that. Josh. Oh, that's Josh. Yeah, Josh, Josh yeah. No, that's fine. You didn't look at the Zoom guide at all, did you? No, I did, <laughs> but then well, it was a little off. No, there were, there were some bits where it was like, you know, Mark Muncy appearing, but then it was like, it was at like one o'clock, and then it was like, yeah, my panel was at seven. I'm like, wait, that's wrong. <laughs> Do you, yeah. do you understand how I look at the Zoom guide? I go, okay, here's the Zoom guide. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, the rest of yeah. this I don't care about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I will share. I will probe. But I'm like, unless we're part of it, I'm like, I, I'm only focusing on what we're doing right now. <laughs> so, so much work. Well, yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's at 8 a.m. So, Val, if you want to do an after dark show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to really traumatize kids? <laughs> we got a panel for you at 1 a.m. your time. <laughs> and it will. I got to skew you guys because I need to start working yeah. on the next panel. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're at the end of the after party broadcast party. So good. Val, thank you so much for sticking around here. I mwah, really oh, appreciate you guys. Yeah. And we really appreciate you. Now we're real friends. friends. This is awesome. I, would, but... I really hope you can make it for the 530. So, so do I, because I'm going to be a doctor and I need a companion. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. Actually, Christian, if you could just, could you just send me li links or whatever it is that I need yeah, to? Um... Melanie will have it because she's going to go get it ready. <laughs> she's oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so she's getting yeah, ready. Okay. I have to answer questions for Nisha, which I haven't done yet. I'm a bad girl. It <laughs> 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 was supposed to be uh, submitted two hours ago. I'm like, well, that didn't happen. I got a link now to Val. If you guys want to send me any links that she needs to, just send me over. I'll send it to her. And, and, and she takes it. She takes it. Everybody who's been joining us, thank you so much for the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. Again, please stay safe out there continue to become part of the legend and as brian k moore says wash your damn hands <laughs> <laughs> like that guy has to tell everybody else <laughs> and val thank you so nice much instead of crude how the people on twitch normally say it <laughs> and i guess now val is on another show on harley con 5 30 this afternoon eastern standard time so catch val over there she's going to be talking with uh, Mackenzie and Misha, <laughs> and also Valila, 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 God, hey, please. Valila. I'm going to make your name a spell because he has such trouble with it. I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, okay. we're done. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for coming with Have us. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Val, we'll keep in touch. Right? Love you. Pleasure. We're, we're going to keep in touch. Cool. Oh, hang on one second. <laughs> no.